don't what's understand. Your, what's your question? Oh, we haven't even begun. I'm not done with you yet. I got the mic, and I'm not going anywhere. Turn off the power. I got a very loud voice. This ain't over yet. My wife was diagnosed with cancer when she was 40 years old. She beat it, but every day, every day, she lives with it. She thinks about it. Every pain, every new something going on somewhere, is it coming back? Is this cancer? Do I have it again? Is it going to kill me this time? Is it going to take me away from my children? Speaking of which, my children both have pre-existing conditions from birth. One cardiac, one thyroid. You have been the single greatest threat to my family in the entire world. You are the reason I stay up at night. You are the reason that I can't sleep. What happens if I lose my job? I'm very fortunate, sir. I have a really good job. And I have really good health insurance. But now my wife, who every day is wondering if she's going to get cancer, is it happening now? Well, it didn't happen now, but what about now? Now also has to contend with, what if my husband loses his job? If I lose my job, we can't afford COBRA. We can't afford to get private insurance. We get it from my employer. If I lose it, it's gone. If I lose my job on a Monday, if I'm lucky enough to find a job on a Tuesday, which never happens, they will not have insurance ready for me. I will not be eligible for three to six months. Suddenly, I'm in a high-risk pool. My pre-existing conditions, which I don't give a shit about, go after me. Come after me, I don't care. But you came after my... You came after my wife. You came after my kids. This is what you did to us. In this district, you do not listen. But your actions affect the entire country. There is no one in this country that your actions are not going to affect. So everyone's voice is important. And when 17% of the population said, don't do it, you did it. Well, there was a horrible bill available to you from a horrible group of people who believe that we don't deserve health insurance. They have said it on TV, on camera. Well, then you're not paying attention. And that's your responsibility. They said it. They said that if we get sick, it's our fault. These are the people that are in your party that you're working with. These are the people that came up with a plan that's going to kill millions of people. The CBO scored it, 24 million people off of health insurance, and they call that choice. Like we're choosing not to have health insurance if we can't afford it. That is insulting. That is detrimental to the mental health of us as a nation. I work in health care, sir. It is complicated. The only one that doesn't believe that it's complicated is an orange-haired buffoon sitting in the White House. And you're working with him to take something that he doesn't understand, that he won't be responsible for, because he's going to be fine. You're working with him, you're working with Ryan, you're working with people that don't care about us. No more. You came from my you came from my wife. I will not forgive. I will not forget. I don't want to hear your response. I'm not interested. I've heard it already. I heard it in Weartown. I've been watching you on TV and I read the bill that you sponsored. I read the one that you were willing to say yes to. I know exactly what's going on, Congressman. I'm not an idiot. I see it. Everyone here knows what's going on. Everyone in the country knows what's going on. You owe it to everyone. Your fundamental principle is flawed. I don't have any choice with an insurance company. I have no value to an insurance company. I can't do anything to their CEO. 
I can argue till I'm blue in the face. But a single payer run by the government, oh yeah, it's got problems, but it's also got elections, and you're going to find that out in 2018. Yeah. You're done, Tommy boy. That's it.